All right, guys. It is a gloomy, rainy day. It is a rainy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Here in the, we are in the shithole city of San Antonio, Texas, where I have not been in, I think, about 15 years. Good God, what has happened to this town? San Antonio, Texas in the uh, last 15 years. That is a whole different uh, chronicle of the collapse of global industrial civilization. But while I sit around and wait for uh, my friend to get her teeth cleaned, uh, we're going to go over here. Oh, it is a rainy Thursday, March 30th, uh, 2023. And... Uh, we're going to go over here to today's mainstream media from Quartz, this outfit called Quartz, which is kind of borderline mainstream. Uh, and Quartz is going to attempt to have an intelligent conversation with the uh, mainstream readers about the population bomb. And I always enjoy uh, reading when uh, clueless moron normies try to explain to other clueless moron normies about population bombs, but at least this article is trying a little bit and not uh, crying about the that we have too few people on the planet and that we need more. So anyway, you got to give them a little bit of credit. <clears throat> Here in this uh, knee slapper, the world population bomb might not go off after all. Well, obviously, we already have a problem uh, in the headline because the world population bomb went off, I would say, uh, right around 1750. There were, in 1750, there were probably, if you believe the bean counters, uh, probably just a little bit fewer than one billion people on the planet living without fossil fuels. So, sometime in that 1750 to 1800 range, we will call it, let's just call it 250 years ago, that the population bomb went off 250 years ago and here we are today so we got to make that little amplification and clarification but anyway I'm trying to give Quartz the benefit of the doubt because at least they're not uh, acting like they're not taking the uh, Elon Musk default mode that uh, the biggest threat to global industrial civilization is too few people. All right. When the global population passed the 8 billion mark, supposedly on November 15th of last year, demographers had a peak population in sight. 10.4 billion people sometime around the year 2080, but a report published on Monday by some group calling itself Earth for All, a collective that includes the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research and the Stockholm Resilience Center, found that the world's population growth may peak lower and begin to drop sooner than previous projections. All right, and, and I'm glad they, they understand that in the most optimistic scenario, they do understand at least uh, the, the, what the most optimistic scenario is, although, of course, uh, the Elon Musk, Alex Jones crowd would call it the most pessimistic scenario, at least 
Quartz magazine understands uh, what the op the most optimistic scenario, at least on the surface, is. In the most optimistic scenario, the report found that population growth could peak at eight and a half billion in 24 and drop below six billion by 2100. So they understand that purely looking uh, at population without looking, you know, with the other head of the snake over consumption, that a planet of six billion people is a hell of a lot better at least than a planet of eight and a half billion people, although six billion people is still six times as many uh, people as there were when the population bomb uh, exploded 250 years ago. But at, at least they understand that much, whether they understand that one billion people uh, is a hell of a lot more optimistic than six billion, I don't know. And for all of you near-term human uh, extinction folks and, and other people who uh, find it a great knee slapper that there's going to be six billion people on this planet by the year 2100, uh, that, that is another rant. Of course, this article uh, is completely not taking into account, which means uh, that uh, the, the group coming up with this report is not taking into account the bottleneck. That if this is eight and a half billion people going into a bottleneck, there ain't gonna be six billion people coming back out of it. Uh, the question is, is there going to be one billion people or zero people coming out of the bottleneck, but uh, this article and uh, is, is completely ignoring population ecologists uh, looking at the bottleneck that we're heading into. And so just because I am continuing with this article does not mean that I don't understand that we're going into a bottleneck and that there's no damn way there's going to be six billion people on this planet uh, by the year 2100. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm just trying to explain to people how to read a mainstream media article uh, on overpopulation, even when you understand. Uh, I I anyway, let's just go on with the article. Okay, but what would this reduction require? This reduction would require deep investments in poverty alleviation of a kind that would eliminate extreme poverty by 2060 with investments in education and health and, quote, according to the report, extraordinary policy turnarounds on food and energy security, inequality and gender equity. Okay, again, if your goal is to uh, eliminate extreme poverty by 2060, you would need to do that. Ain't gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen. Uh, if there's any uh, reduction in extreme poverty between now and 2060, it's going to be because the people in extreme poverty are dead. That is one way to reduce extreme poverty 
is to reduce the number of humans living in extreme poverty, which will which will probably happen between now and 2060. You will probably at some point see a rapid uh, and major reduction in people living in an extreme poverty. It will have nothing to do with extraordinary policy turnarounds on food and energy security, inequality, and gender equity. Uh, okay, if that does not happen, which it will not, and economic development continues at the current pace, so this is a big if, if economic development does continue at our current pace. Big if here, guys. Uh, then, you know, if we don't hit the limits to growth between now and 2060, that's what they're saying, if we do not hit the wall, as, you know, uh, Tim Garrett, uh, and uh, William Reese and whoever else uh, are claiming we probably are going to hit the wall sometime between now and before 2060. But assuming that Tim Garrett, William Reese, any population ecologist with a brain ha are clueless morons and have no idea what they're talking about and we don't hit the wall with our uh, current economic paradigm. Uh, the report still finds that population growth could peak at 8.6 billion in 2050 and then fall below 8 billion by 2100. This is a considerably sharper fall than UN projections, which estimate a population of 8.5 billion in 2030, 9.7 9 billion by 2050, and a peak of around 10.4 billion people during the 2080s, where it will plateau until 2100 and, and on. So anyway, uh, anybody believing these UN projections obviously has never heard my interview with Tim Garrett, uh, William Reese, uh, Paul Ehrlich, uh, any population ecologist with a brain looking at what's going on on this planet and understanding on a, on a most fundamental, minimal level, the limits to growth knows they're all full of shit. But anyway, guys, before I go on with this story and, and get a mainstream definition of the population bomb, let's see if they ever are even going to talk about... Uh, uh, overconsumption. Okay. Uh, let, let's, let, let's go back to this sentence because they do not talk about it in the article, I don't think. <coughs> to go from eight and a half billion below 6 billion, if you believe the various scenarios in this report, would require deep investments in poverty alleviation. And, and what they're saying, uh, as you hear all the time, is that the richer people are, the fewer people they have. This is where all of this argument about, uh, about bringing people out of poverty uh, is a way to solve the population bomb. That the more people come out of poverty, the fewer children they have. But of course, what this completely does not talk about is, okay, 
uh, 6 billion people living at a higher level of income very well could be eating more of the planet than 8 billion people living at our, at our present uh, income inequality. The, the, the more income equality we have, okay, the more, uh, the more people come out of poverty, uh, it, it, it doesn't take long for the lines to even out and, and then, then cross. Uh, so, th 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 this isn't rocket science, uh, when was my last math class I took that this isn't very, you, you need to learn the IPAT, uh, equation that, um, you, you know, that Paul Ehrlich was talking about in the population bomb, I believe. Uh, in the book, The Population Bomb, that environmental impacts equal, well, the T is technology, uh, but the P and the A is population and affluence. So, if, which is overpopulation and overconsumption, uh, population and consumption, that if the population, even if the population drops in the IPAT equation and the A, the affluence, otherwise known as consumption, otherwise known as overconsumption, goes up, it cancels each other out and actually could fairly rapidly uh, have a bigger impact on the planet than we're having now, even if there are two billion less people. This is one of the many frying pans versus the fire that is unfolding here in the 21st century that the clueless morons writing for the uh, mainstream media have never considered, never considered any of this, never considered any of this, to, to uh, e even if they understand that uh, a lower population is good for the planet. Uh, lower population, good for the planet, uh, high, uh, lower poverty, good for humanity, bad for the planet. Anything that is good for humanity is bad for the planet. This, uh, this is not rocket science, guys. Uh, is there anybody failing to understand this? But I can imagine if I were to teach a class in this, uh, try to teach a class to this, to a bunch of mainstream media uh, reporters, they would have no clue what I'm talking about. And they sure as hell uh, would have no clue how to explain it to their clueless moron normie, uh, normie readers. You know, this is why these little lefties uh, cheering on bringing more of humanity uh, out of poverty. Anyway, uh, let's just touch on the uh, rest of this article. It's not that long. Uh, getting back to the article. So what is the population bomb? The link between population and its effects on the planet has long been fraught causing consternation, yes, causing consternation at least since 1968 when a highly debated fear-mongering book, a fear-mongering book called The Population Bomb was published. 
more recent debates explore the morality of having children given the pressures that a surging population places on the world and its changing climate. All right, but if Earth for Alls, Earth for All, meaning for humans and non-humans, best scenario plays out, which is the sharpest drop in population, the so-called population bomb, bomb may never go off, although again, it went off 250 years ago, uh, to arrive at its forecast, Earth for All's researchers used a methodology that takes into account economic advancement and change through the decades between now and, you know, like 2060, rather than the UN statistical projection, which assumes that the conditions shaping today's fertility rates will hold until 2050 and 2100. Education and economic progress have reliably reduced fertility rates in the past, the report argues, as economic conditions improve for more women, especially in developing countries with the highest fertility rates, they will have fewer children and lead to a quicker decline in global population but uh, as I was just talking about, that is completely irrelevant. Uh, while we can cheer that part of the IPAT equation on, if, if all it does is meaning each one of their kids, each one of their fewer kids eats a bigger piece of the Mother Earth pie, then it doesn't take long for their family of kids to be eating a bigger piece of the pie than if they had had more kids. And then, of course, this one, uh, th this uh, trite cliche, uh, our reducing fertility rates will not solve climate change. While a growing population will certainly use more resor resources, the relationship between fertility and emissions is not a direct one. Take, for example, Somalia, which has among the highest fertility rates in the world at 6.4 births per woman, its emissions per capita is so low, it is statistically zero, according to World Bank data. South Korea, which has the world's lowest fertility rate at 0 0.8, emits 11.8 metric tons of CO2 per capita. The U.S. with a fertility rate of 1.8 um, as opposed to Somalia's 6.4 produces 14.7 metric tons of CO2 uh, per capita. Uh, so this is exactly uh, talking about, although they don't even realize what they're talking about when they're talking about it, that uh, as Somalia, uh, as if Somalia is going to come out of poverty, all this does is illustrate exactly what uh, I'm talking about. Wealthy countries have significantly uh, higher emissions per person than developing ones. Uh, oh, well, they actually do mention it. I'm sorry. I, uh, I have a little bit of egg on my face. So, 
This raises a fundamental paradox in the report's findings. I apologize for all of the trash I've been talking about. Uh, this raises a fundamental paradox in the report's findings. Otherwise, a uh, frying pan versus the fire paradox. Uh, the projected fall in fertility rates is predicated on improved economic access, which in turn will raise the carbon footprints of the children born in the next few decades. Uh, for Benjamin Caligari, one of the authors of the report, this is exactly the point of the report. Uh, even if we predict a lower peak in population and then a decline, we still see that there is a need for significant global efforts to fight climate change. In itself, population decline, if it's, you know, if it's just balanced out, uh, by a, a rise in consumption is not sufficient. Uh, there you go. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a lower population can ease pressure on the climate transition and make it cheaper, but we still have to address, uh, you, you know, all of these other issues. The world will still need to move away from using fossil fuels and change the way it consumes and produces goods, buildings, vehicles, food, and everything else that makes up our current economy. Uh, quoting uh, Caligari, otherwise we will, <clears throat> we will, you know, still have unsustainable climate change and we will be living outside the planetary boundaries and things are only going to get worse for us. Things are only going to get worse for us. And this is the bottom line. It's the closing quote. So good for uh, Dr. Caligari Quartz Magazine and Yahoo News for summing this up that things are only going to get worse for us. Uh, I, I will still stand by my, uh, my uh, contentions that someone who is never born uh, has exactly a zero carbon and ecological footprint. If you, there is one way to uh, live as a human with zero carbon and ecological footprint, that is to never be born. Uh, and of course, there is this other thing that uh, this article in the mainstream media and how many other people do not realize the difference between a carbon footprint and an ecological footprint. The carbon footprint is one toe off the ecological footprint. If human beings had a zero carbon footprint, there is still the rest of the footprint, which are the other uh, eight planetary boundaries that, uh, whether it's uh, six billion people, eight billion people, a planet of six billion people, even at today's uh, income inequality, is six times too many people on the planet. Uh, that, uh, on one level, carbon footprint, global emissions, have nothing to do with the story of whether uh, six to eight billion people can live on this planet sustainably. Can't happen. Can't be done.
No such a thing. A lie. So things will continue to get worse for all of us. Or what did Alex say yesterday? This mess is only going to get messier. But I need to wrap this up and uh, start figuring out where to find some Vietnamese food in San Antonio, Texas, while I still can. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog.